going to high school, you know, old school. Jim, the guy's done a great job out here. But this is really, really a, a fine, fine school. I have a, uh, I have a young guy, 16 year old, that just sort of came along late, and, uh, <laughs> testing the hell out of us. I'll tell you, I coached secondary for a lot of years and lost a lot of hair. Now this guy here has caused me to lose the rest of it. But, uh, uh, this is a hell of a school. It's a great school, and uh, it's a pleasure again for me to be here. And like I said before, Jim and his staff have done a, done a tremendous job of getting this school uh, started. And, uh, Monsignor Harris, who runs it, the principal, is is really some kind of guy. He uh, he's a guy that should be up there talking because he is such an inspirational uh, uh, a guy when he talks. Uh, we're talking about this morning now uh, is a strong side hot package, which is. Uh, you know, when you talk about the hot game, it's throwing hot with the passing game, and, and it's so damn overrated. And, and, and it sounds like, God, God, we can't do it with our guys. Uh, our guys are too young. They can't handle it. They can't do those kinds of things. Well, uh, there's a four-play package that we put in, and we put it in especially, especially to make it easier for the quarterback. He didn't have to read any coverages. All he was going to do is read a progression of receivers. The throws are not real long throws for the most part, for the most part. And I think they're real easy to do, and I know that they'll work at any level. I know that they'll work at any level. The, the only thing you could have a little bit of a problem with, I think, uh, uh, with guys at, at, at a real uh, uh, early age in their careers <laughs> is possibly the protection involved. Okay? Now, what we did, <laughs> what we did, again, and hot just means that we're going to go ahead and uh, and release. And I'll start just with, with a two-back formation. And any of these things you can do from multiple formations, which you'll see when we get to the cut-ups here. But what we wanted to do, of course, is be able to, and in a passing game, if you're going to have a complete passing game, you have to be able to do this, is to go ahead and get four people out right now. You've got to be able to do that to have a complete passing game. <clears throat> so that's what we were going to do. Of course, the two wide receivers we're going to release and run pass patterns. We're going to tell them what to do, and we'll use numbers. And, and once I start getting into this here, I'm going to refer to numbers, and I'll show you what the pass pattern is. The numbers won't, won't uh, uh, you know, mean anything to you. But we want to be able to get those guys out. We want to be able to get the tight end out. We want to be able to get one of the backs out right now, right now. Now, if you're going to go ahead and do that, if you're going to do that, then somebody has to dual read in the protection scheme. Somebody has to dual read in the protection scheme. Now, let's just draw up a straight uh, 34 defense. And we'll go over any other fronts you'd like to in regards to protections, because you've got to start there, of course, when you're throwing the football. Now, if we're going to release this guy, and that guy, and that guy, and that guy, then somebody has to be responsible on this side for one of those two people if they should come. If they both come, if they both come, then you're going to have a loose rusher. You're going to have one rusher that is unblocked. Consequently, the idea of throwing hot, uh, of having to throw the ball hot. And this old face is up on top of there, for God's sake. How are you guys doing? Uh, Okay, and again, it sounds good, you know, a hot boy, it's great, man. It's, it's really overrated. But if you're going to have a complete passing game, you've got to be able to do it, okay? Here's what we'll do now, protection-wise, against a 34 look, against a 34 look. The backside is normal pass protection. They're going to block there and there. He's responsible for this guy. The center's responsible there. The tackle's responsible for that guy. Now, on the onside, on the onside, we have to give this guard or the uncovered lineman a one to two read. <laughs> a one to two read. I don't think it's a hard thing to do. Again, I, I've never had to experience it at, at, the, uh, uh, at the, uh, the high school level or the JV level. I know high schools have done it and have had a lot of success with the hot package with the four plays that I'm going to talk about here. Because right? I think it's a real high percentage and, 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 and it's, uh, the throws are high percentage throws for the most part. And it's a very easy thing for the quarterback, a very easy read for the quarterback. So what we're saying here is the guard is going to read this guy. If he comes, he blocks him. Now, if this guy comes, he is a loose rusher. He is free, isn't he? There's nobody blocking him. So what we have to do is throw the ball to one of these two guys 
quickly. All we tell the quarterback now is an inside release by the tight end, and the tight end is looking. I mean, he's down here, and he releases down inside. The backer comes. He looks to the quarterback for the ball. All right? If he is clean, if he is clean in there, the quarterback will just dump him the ball. If he's not clean, if he's not clean, we think then possibly this linebacker is probably riding him pretty good. So we know we're going to get the first guy blocked, and then the quarterback comes back, and he doesn't have to throw the ball hot because we can block one of those guys, right? We can block one of them. Now let's just put up one other look here, and I don't know if you see it that much, but just so we'll have a four-down look. <clears throat> just like this. Now the uncovered guy is the center. He's the guy that has a dual read. Now this is where a lot of people, now as soon as you get the four-down linemen, say, hell, there's no way in the world Ain't no way in the world I'm going to go read a center in there. And you may come to that decision yourself. You may not want to go ahead and do that. We do it. I know, absolutely know, that a center could come out and block that guy. And that is a fact. I mean, I guarantee you that. Now, what I can't guarantee you are these games inside. You know, we're really, it gets soft inside. It does get soft inside. If they happen to bring that guy in, they're gaming inside. But I think it's easy for the center to go one <coughs> to two. And he comes out, that guy doesn't come, he looks out here, that guy doesn't come. Then he's back up inside at a second level to really be able to help in here with the games. So the protection is sound, there's no question about that. The protection is sound, but there is a chance of having a loose rusher if they bring two people. If they bring two of the linebackers, of course if they're doing that, then we're pretty sure that they're going to be in some form of man coverage, aren't we? <laughs> some form of man coverage. Now let's go ahead and start, and again, now if there are any other fronts, and, and, and you know nowadays, uh, <laughs> you guys that are in it now, you know nowadays there are a million fronts, right? There's all kinds of things. The defensive guys cheat like hell. They're, they're, they're moving guys all over the place, and they're doing a hell of a lot of blitzing. Consequently, quarterbacks are getting hit. Quarterbacks get knocked out, especially in our league. Uh, we, we seem to lose uh, uh, quarterbacks for... Uh, uh, at least a portion of the year, uh, quite a few of them, really. Okay, all right, what we did now, again, it's a four-play package, and we like to package things up. We think they're easier to remember. So we talked about to our guys about a four-play, strong side, hot package, or scat. We call it scat. is a protection uh, a call for us. Uh, our guys know what those four plays are. I think it's easy to memorize something. I've got three here, I've got four over there, there's two there, there's five or six over here. I can categorize, I can categorize these packages and, and, and uh, uh, I'll learn them a heck of a lot more quickly, a heck of a lot more quickly than normal, okay? The first one now is we're gonna take the fullback and put him in the flat. All right, we're going to take the fullback and put him in the flat. The second one we're going to run now, we're going to take the fullback <coughs> and put him in a crossing pattern. So we've got the fullback short outside, we've got the fullback short inside. The next one, we're going to take the fullback <coughs> and put him deep inside, deep inside. And this angle will change quite a bit, as you'll see from the from the uh, cut-ups, and then we're going to take the fullback, and we normally don't run it with the fullback in the backfield. We'll normally run it from a formation where we get him out here, but then we're going to take the fullback and put him to the corner. So we have fullback running to the flat. So we have an F flat. All right, we have an F cross. We have an F, and we call this a post pattern. You could call it most anything because that's the way it, that's what it looks like. Uh, a lot of the times, it looks like about anything. And then we'll put the fullback to the corner, all right? Again, now it is a hot package. The fullback is gone. He has no pickup. He has no pickup. We're going to dual read <laughs> one of the offensive linemen, the uncovered offensive linemen. We're going to go ahead and dual read. The other thing we're going to go ahead and do against a strong safety blitz type team or the fair defense, you guys see much of that? Uh, do you see much of that fair defensive look? Uh, we are going to, if we get a strong safety blitz, is block the tight end out. We're gonna, he's going to block his way. He's going to recognize and block his way out. So we will lose a hot part of it to the tight end. But we think then we're going to go ahead and be able to block it up and still go back and go ahead and throw the football. 
Okay? Now, again, like I mentioned before, in our scheme of throwing the ball, we use numbers, numbers that tell the receivers what to do. And it's, it's really an easy way of doing it. Now that they learn, we'll, we'll bring a group in here of, of uh, rookies in many campus, a bunch of young guys that have never, that have never been in the scheme. <laughs> and we'll go over the individual pass patterns and give them numbers and then adjustments. And then adjustments. And it's amazing how quickly they can go out on the field and run those pass patterns, run a five, run a four, run an eight, run a seven, you know, whatever that happens to be, whatever the numbers happen to be. And it's amazing how quickly they learn that. They learn a number. As long as they know which number they run, they're fine. And what the adjustment is for that number. Okay? The first one now, with the fullback going to the flat, for us now, will be a 435. And again, that doesn't mean anything to you. A four pattern for us is a deep inside breaking route, 18 to 20 yards deep. All right? The, I'm sorry, the first one is 839. All right? So the eight pattern for us is a post pattern. That is a post pattern. The inside three for the tight end is inside release. Again, he's the hot guy. Anywhere from six to twelve yards. We give him a lot of leeway on the inside routes. Six <coughs> to twelve yards. An outside breaking route. And then on the outside we go a nine, which is just a goal. Which is a goal for us. All right. The F cross now. The F cross will go 435. That's the same kind of an inside three. The five is a comeback on the outside, so if we went 435 F cross, we use words to tell backs what to do. We said F run the cross, we didn't say anything else. If you're not told what to do, which the halfback is not told what to do, he automatically checks his protection and then runs a swing pattern. That is automatic for him. That's automatic for him. All right, this one here now, we're going to go 5, 45 F post, <clears throat> and that's how we'll call it, and this is for 32F corner. So the fives we said were comebacks on the outside. All right, there's 17 yard patterns on the outside. Comebacks on the outside. Our inside four pattern by the tight end is inside release, inside release. And then we want to make sure we get on the other side of the ball with this F post coming in behind him. So if it comes up, zone coverage, he's going to gear down over here, not stop, but gear down. If it's man, he's going to continue to go ahead and run. And we've got the F post. And again, we didn't tell him what to do, so he checks and swings. Over here now, we said four. We said the four outside four was 18 to 20 yards deep, an inside breaking route. <clears throat> four, 30. Again, this is an inside three. But with this number combination, this inside three is a little different than those first two there in that we want it to look like this. So it's going to be a wheel back out. He's going to start like he's going across the field and then he's going to wheel back out. The two pattern on the outside for us is a fake delay. It'll look like a hitch with a corner off out there a lot of times. It'll look like a hitch. Okay, we never fade this route because of the corner pattern in behind it. So we're going to definitely go ahead and run the fake delay. Now let's go ahead and go through the progressions for the quarterback. And again, I said it's real easy for him. Very, very easy for him. And when we put it in, He's just worried about a couple of guys. What we tell him is, <clears throat> if the fullback's open, throw him the ball. Now that's about as easy as you can get, isn't it? I mean, I don't care if the, if, if, uh, uh, the kid is uh, 13, 14 years old, 12 years old, 10 years old. If you tell your kid, and he's in Pop Warner, and he's eight years old or nine years old, to come back, and if the fullback's running to the flat, if he's open, throw him the ball, that's pretty easy. Now that is not hard for him, is it? That is not hard for him to do. The flat pattern is a relatively easy pattern to throw, right? You have to do it quite a few times. Now you need some repetition, but it's not a long throw. It's not a long throw, and it should be very high percentage throw. We tell him to throw the ball to the fullback if he's open, right? If he's not open, throw the ball to the tight end. Again, I don't think that's real hard to do. I come back, I look, the fullback's open, no. Tight end, yeah. Okay, now if the tight end's not open, then you've got to, sometimes we'll come back to the fullback in the flat and get him real late out there in the flat. But basically, that's what we're doing. He's got a one to a two. Over here now, we tell the guy, throw the ball to the fullback if he's open. If he's not open, throw it to the tight end. Pretty easy, isn't it? All right, over here, it's a little harder. This one's a little harder, but we say, throw the ball to the 
F pulse. We're always going to the fullback first on that. <laughs> These first three, as you can see, if he's not open, then move to that guy. If he's not open, move to that guy. And this one has a fourth one, or just a swing out here. But I think this is a pretty easy progression for a quarterback. If we're in the right formation, if we're in the right formation, I come back and I'm looking at the fullback here and he's open, yes, throwing the ball. I come back, fullback, no, tight end. I just move my feet. You guys all work on footwork. The guys coaching quarterbacks all work on the feet and how you move your feet, get your body around to find the next receiver. No, tight end, yes. Okay, I come back, fullback, no, tight end, no. Come back on the outside, yeah. Okay, or work out to the swing, or work out to the swing. Now, the one we changed the fullback as being the number one guy. Sorry, Coach. Can Pardon me. Go ahead. Sorry if I interrupt you. Yes. Uh, Anytime you got a question. On this side. Yes. How do you have to do young flare? You coming up on. Uh, Who are you talking about now? Half back, left back. This guy right here? Yes. He runs a swing pattern, and our swing pattern now is parallel. We don't want to lose any ground. If you are, of course, our hash marks are all to it. We're sort of playing the middle of the field, which is a little bit different. but. We'll have aiming points for the swings now. What we'll do with the swing pattern is, if you are short side of the field, saying we're in the right formation, we're on the left hash mark, the wide field is to the right, okay? We will have him run parallel to the line of scrimmage quickly after he checks his protection, okay? Then, then uh, we give him an aiming point a halfway between the numbers and the sideline. That's his aiming point. If he's somewhere in that area, that's about the width we want. If we're running a swing pattern to the wide side of the field, then we want him to come up somewhere on the numbers. So we give him an aiming point so that there's <coughs> fairly close to being in the same relative area every time they run that particular pass pattern. Yeah. Is that, is that your question? I'm sorry. Yes, it is. How many step drives? This here? Yeah. Okay. This is a five-step <coughs> five step control drop five-step control drop. So we're going to take three steps to get ourselves out of there. That third step better be pretty good, too. You know, we got to get ourselves out of there. One, two, three, four and five is right up underneath us. We've got to be ready to get the ball out. If the flat is there, bang, get it to him. Okay? If it's not there, if it's not there, you may have to move back up inside and find that tight end on that first one we're talking about over there. Okay? okay Sometimes it'll come up. We end up throwing this ball about six and a half yards from the line of scrimmage. Six, six and a half, somewhere in that area. Yeah. Sometimes we'll get to seven. Again, it depends on, on, on your quarterback and you know how long leg it is, how big his steps are getting out of there. It's very important when you're doing this, it's very important when you're doing this, is that the last two steps are short steps so that he is ready to throw the ball. So he's ready to throw the ball because if he's going one, two, three, four, Five, bang, the thing's gone, maybe. You know, it's gone. He's got to be ready to go ahead and throw the ball. Got to be ready to throw the ball. And the thing that's good about it, I think, uh, is you can convince your offensive line coach, you can convince your offensive line coach the ball's going to come out quick. The ball is going to come out quick. You're not going to have to sit there and pass protect forever. So <laughs> it only makes sense that protection-wise now is is inside, you've got to be pretty firm in the middle. If you're going to throw the ball from six, six and a half, seven yards, you've got to be pretty firm inside. I mean, you can't be a really passive, inside pass protecting type of a team, huh? Okay? On the last one out here, this is a progression on 545, the F post. The progression out here now is what we've done with this two pattern, which is really just fake delay on the outside, is if that corner is off, we're going to run it like a hitch on the outside. So it's sort of a built in a built-in hitch. You can throw it on three steps. A lot of times you'll throw it on five. <clears throat> but a built-in hitch on the outside. If the corner is off. If the corner is off. All right. If not, then we want to go ahead and do that and make it a fake delay out of it. If it's a press look, if it's a press look, what we got to do is buy some time to let the corner route go and then we want to start him down inside and make him think we're running across the field and then back outside again if it happens to be a press look. Okay, now, what we've done to this to help ourselves, to give ourselves a chance up the field, to get something up the field, <clears throat> all right, for us, we like to throw this eight pattern. We think we do it pretty well. Our, our quarterback can throw it. The receivers can, can run it pretty dang good. So we want to give ourselves a chance to throw that eight pattern if it happens to be there. 
before we go to the fullback tight end read. There may be something else that your guy can do well that you want to build into it on the back side. It might be a hitch on the back side. Uh, it has to be something that he's going to be able to read or have to be able to read quickly and get the ball out fairly quickly if he likes it. Okay, for our guy, we say, <coughs> we say, we would like to throw that if it's there. We would like to throw that if it's there. And what we try to get him to do now is to anticipate, especially an eight pattern for us, anticipate it being there if it looks that way when you get up under the center. If I get up under the center now, anticipate if it looks like it's going to be there. It's first and 10. This team is a 75% strong side inverted zone team on first down until you get into the red area, let's say. I mean, that's the kind of stats or numbers you have going into the ball game. So all of a sudden, the quarterback comes up, it's first down, the corner is off, the weak safety is sort of over in the middle of the field, the strong safety is edging up a little bit, the strong corner is off. It looks like what I anticipate the coverage to be. It looks like it as I walk up under the center. Now, as soon as I get there and it looks that way, then I've got to tell myself, because of how we have to throw the eight pattern, is that's what it's going to be. Now, I'm going to get the ball, and our eight is five steps. It's three, two short, and then I'm going to turn it loose. Now, I'm not advocating trying to throw this with young guys. This is not an easy pattern to throw. I'm just saying you can build something into it that your guy can throw, and he can read quickly, and he can read quickly. But anyway, we're going to give ourselves a chance to get something up the field if we can. Because if we throw and catch this ball, we would, we'll catch it anywhere from oh, 18 to, to 25 yards deep. In San Diego, it was 18 to 22 yards. It's over and over and over because Faust got it up so quick and our guys didn't run quite as well. Uh, here now we got a quarterback with a bigger arm. Doesn't get the ball quite as quickly and receivers run a little better. So here we catch it. Uh, probably 22 to 25 yards deep here, so it's a little bit deeper, but that's not bad now. Huh? If you throw it and catch it, I mean, you're looking at a flat 22 to 25 yard gain before he does anything else. All you got to do is throw it and catch it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good percentage. I mean, if we can get that, we will build this into as much as we possibly can. <laughs> All right, now, the other thing we tell the quarterback now is eliminate that pattern over there as quickly as you can. And if you can eliminate it, if you can eliminate it before you ever take the snap from the center, that is super. That is super, because the easiest thing you can ever do for a quarterback is say, okay, quarterback, you're gonna go five steps deep and you're gonna throw the ball to that guy. Or you're gonna go three steps, you're gonna throw it to that guy. You're gonna go seven steps, you're throwing it to that guy. That's the easiest thing you could ever do for a quarterback. You'd be amazed, be amazed when you do that, and watch that guy go back, and watch his footwork, all those things you've taught him, it looks great. Confidence, good arm, good velocity, whatever the guy has tool-wise, you will see him do it if you tell him just to throw it to that guy. Now, we all know in a passing game, you can't just tell him to throw it to that guy because the defense might take that guy away, so you've got to give him somewhere else to go with the ball. Unless you got a guy that's a great runner and say, come back, throw it to that guy, he's not there running. Not bad. The guy in San Francisco, the left hander up there, that's not bad, is it? <laughs> well, he's not there, run with it. Shoo! It's going to look like a tubby of quail coming out of there. Okay? <coughs> eliminate, eliminate as soon as you possibly can. So if I'm the quarterback and I walk up to the line of scrimmage, and all of a sudden the, the safeties they look like they're cheating back a little bit, uh, the corners are up a little bit, and I think it may be a roll over here, I eliminate that thing, and all I'm doing is what? I'm going to come back and I control five step drop and I'm going to throw the ball where? Pull back. He's there. If he's not there, I'm going to throw the ball to the. I'm going to get some help over here. And, uh, I'm going to throw the ball to the tight end. Now, that's not hard to do. All right? You look at a flat pattern, high percentage, right? Flat has to be high percentage. That pattern by the tight end is a high percentage pass. It's a very easy pass to throw. It doesn't, the ball doesn't travel very far ball does not travel very far. For the quarterback, I think you'll all agree with me, is it's pretty easy to come back and tell the quarterback, hey, come back, it's a control five, there's a flat pattern, is he open? Yes, throw it to him. Is he open? No. Find the tight end and throw it to him. I don't think that's hard to do. I do not, well, I know damn well it's not hard to do. 
And we're talking about, and we're talking about doing it with, with guys that have played a lot longer than some of the guys that you guys are coaching. These guys have played a long time, and we're still making it as simple as we can for them. And they're supposed to know everything. They only played for years, played for years. A guy like Dan Fouts in San Diego, I mean, hell, there's a quarterback that is any smarter than him. I'd like to see the guy. Now, I haven't been around that many of them, but then there might be a guy out there. Boy, if there is, I sure like to see the guy. I mean, this guy knows the game. We made it as simple as we could for him. As simple as we could for him. That guy's got a hell of a lot of things he has to do in the course of a ball game. Okay? <clears throat> so now, what we did on the outside here is we wanted a pass pattern on the outside, and we don't ever want to tell the guy that he's just running a clearing route out there. We don't want to tell him that. All right? But we have a pattern out there. We tell him that he's alive. Now, after a while, he figures out when the quarterback, you throw it 100 times, and he, they never throw it to him. He finally figures out what bull. You know, you know, why? You got to figure out stupid or something? <laughs> We wanted a pass pattern that has a good split. You don't overdo splits. Don't overdo them. Take as normal a split as you possibly can. Uh, I, I think two and three yards in and out, I don't think is a big deal. But if you start going, you know, seven and eight yards out or in, I think it's a very definite indicator to the defender uh, uh, what you're doing split-wise. We want a split that's a fairly wide split, just in case we happen to get a roll out there. If we get a rolled up corner, a rolled up corner with a flat pattern coming at him and a tight end running out at him, then what we would like to do alignment-wise is get him wider initially, right? We want to get him wider initially with our alignment. And if he does roll on us, if he does roll on us, we tell the guy on the outside now, what do you think you should do? What do you think you should do with a fullback running to the flat and a tight end running a, a pattern that's six to 12 yards deep but coming out to you? What's the best thing you can do for this pass pattern? What's the best thing you can do? And a roll, we're always talking about a safety over the top. Who is it important for you to affect on this particular pass pattern? The corner or the safety? Who do we have to affect with this pass pattern? The corner or the safety? If it's a roll, I'm talking about a roll now. The corner's rolling up. The corner's rolling up. The safety's going deep over the top. Who can be a factor? Who can be a factor in defeating the play? Corner. corner. Safety's deep, right? He's deep. He's really out of it. <laughs> Three to four yards deep. His tight end is maximum 12 yards, and we very, very seldom ever get that deep with him. So the guy we have to affect then is the corner. Now what? <clears throat> and again, we ask our guys, what makes sense? Do you go inside of the corner? Do you go outside of the corner? Do you run over the top of the corner? What makes sense for you to do? What do you want to do to the corner? Widen him or bring him in tighter? Widen him. Widen him. You have to do what? Go outside. You've got to go outside of him, right? You've got to go outside of him. If you come inside of him, that's going to bring him down in there a little bit. Isn't it? It's going to bring him down in there. So, uh, again, we try to just uh, um, approach these guys now. What do you have to do? I've got to go outside. And all of a sudden, you got a corner boy sitting out here, and he just stones him, and he says, ah, hell with the coach, man. I'm getting up the field. Turns the corner right down into the flat pattern. <laughs> and he comes in and knocks the hell out of the fullback when we throw the ball to him because all of a sudden this rolled up corner, I'm the left corner, and the routes are coming at me from the inside. I'm the rolled up corner, the receiver goes inside, and I start to write him down in there and look down in there, here's a fullback coming at me, and a quarterback right in behind him throwing in the ball. This is pretty nice, isn't it, huh? That's pretty dang nice for that corner. He's got a hell of a run at it. He's got a nice run at it, here's a fullback like this, and here's a corner. <laughs> Pretty good collision, isn't it? And then we tell the receiver, okay, dummy, you're fullback. We'll put you at fullback. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to roll the corner. The fullback's going to go out there, run up inside the corner. We're going to take a short split, run up inside it. Now let's see what happens. We don't go quite that far, but it's sort of a common sense thing, though, isn't it? Right? We tell that guy out there with that nine pattern. Now, first of all, take a pretty good split because we want that guy on alignment a little wider than normal, just in case we get a roll. Just in case it's a roll. 
okay? Just in case they're playing the coverage where they're rolling that corner. And then you absolutely have to go outside the corner. And we tell them, I don't care, I don't care if you run out here to go outside the corner, again, the ball's down inside of me, and that corner gets you right on the line of scrimmage and runs you up in the sand. We don't care about that. Absolutely don't care. You've done a great job. Why have you done a great job? What did the corner do? Get you way the hell out here. You've got back to the inside, and that's what we're going to make the play, right? We're going to pull the ball to the pullback and then go to the tight end in there. Okay? That's important now. The front part of that route is important. Again, what I'm saying to you is one to two. What the quarterback's going to do. He's going to work that side of it. One to two. If you want to build something in on the back side. If you want to build something in. Something that you do well. That your quarterback does very well. That your receivers do very well. But it has to be something he can read quickly and get thrown quickly. Now, you can't have a deep comeback on the outside out here. <laughs> a deep comeback or a deep inside breaking route or a deep post pattern over the top. Have him come back and hold it and see and see and see if it's going to be there or not. Because then <clears throat> he can't get back and throw the other part of the pass pattern again, which is the one you really want to work. I mean, you want to work the flat pattern, you want to work the inside three. But you'd like to give yourself a chance to make a play out there. Hitch would be great. I mean, let hitch is, uh, especially if you get a guy can roll the ball. Okay? <clears throat> All right, we run the fullback to the flat. Now, what we've told the fullback now in regards to his angle is right off the outside hip of the tight end, just like that, three to four yards deep, and then run parallel to the line of scrimmage. Do not fall up the field when you're running the pass pattern. And we tell them three to four yards, and you'll see, if you see the films here, you'll see them how on the line of scrimmage, a yard deep, two yards deep. We all have problems with pass pattern being run shorter than, than what we'd like them to be run, don't we, uh, uh, with the passing game. But we want him coming out of there as hard and as fast as he possibly can. He is a free release guy. He has no pickup, none. So he doesn't have to block anybody. Get there as quickly as you can get there. If you get to the sideline or we'd like to stop, you know, four to five yards inside the sideline and then just stand there if you haven't gotten the ball. And just stand there if you haven't gotten the ball. Okay? For the quarterback, one to two. All right, let's go to the next one now. We're going to run on a crossing pattern now. So for the quarterback, he's going to come back again, and it's a five-step control drop. I'm going three good steps, and then the last two, I want to get my feet up underneath me. My feet are up underneath me so I can go ahead and get the ball out quickly. Now, we're going to go fullback to the tight end now. Fullback to the tight end, okay. just like we did here. But instead of the flat pattern, we've got a crossing pattern. The tight end has exactly the same pass pattern, except he has to know if you've got a crossing pattern underneath you, you can't run this thing at six yards. You've got to run it eight, 10 to 12 yards deep. You've got to give the crossing pattern room. You have to give him room, all right? You tell the fullback now, you're still coming out of there as hard and as fast as you possibly can. The exact same stem, exact same aiming point, outside hip with the tight end, just like that. Now, on that first one, I did that. On this one, I want to do that. Now, what that angle is, I can't tell you. All right? Initially, what they're going to want to do is they're going to, they're going to want to take the high angle right up into that linebacker and get his butt knocked off. So you certainly don't want that one. And if you get an angle that's too parallel to the line of scrimmage, he's going to, the quarterback's going to have trouble finding him in there. He won't be able to find him. So it's somewhere in between that, whatever that angle is. I don't know. I never passed that class. Whatever, whatever that angle is right there, and the quarterback wants to get it on him quickly, if he's open, give it to him. The fullback's the first guy, isn't he? So I come back, I'm the quarterback, I'm back one, two, three, four, five, I might even do that with it. Pitch and catch, it doesn't have to look beautiful, does it? It doesn't have to look beautiful. The balls don't have to spiral. They don't have to be tight spirals, right? It doesn't, those, those things never win in the game, unless they get thrown straight and the guy catches them. Right? The end over end ball that gets caught for the touchdown that wins the game, beautiful pass, isn't it? <laughs> a spiral that's just beautifully thrown, great velocity that misses the receiver, it's incomplete. That's an incomplete pass. Or if he throws it to him, the guy drops it. He drops the ball, it's incomplete. It's incomplete, it didn't do anything. <laughs> the only ones that are good are the ones that get thrown and the guy catches them. Those are the only good ones. All right, for the quarterback now, again, it's one to two, just like that. One 
to two. I throw the ball to the fullback, he's not open. I'm going to throw that tight end and go ahead and throw the ball to him. Now, it's important now, once he comes back and he doesn't get the first guy, that he doesn't just stand and start doing this and looking. We have problems with our guy doing that. He's a big, tall guy. Getting back in here, it's hard to find guys when you start backing up into the outside rush. Up in here is where you find the lanes. Up inside is where you find the passing lanes. And the upfield rush is here, and then those lanes start opening up for you in there. Yes? Coach, does that quarterback concentrate on, on the fullback coming over, or does he concentrate on the middle back? He is going to throw the ball to the fullback. Okay. But the middle backer is going to be a man <coughs> covering the fullback. Right? You better see that guy, right? Exactly. You better be able to see this guy in here if he's working strong side. Okay. The one thing we have going that helps is tight end inside releasing and pushing up in his face and breaking outside. Okay. That's the one thing we have going for us. That hides the crossing pattern. Okay. If you hold the ball too long and get the crossing pattern across the middle on the other side of the ball, you got a chance for the other one back there that can make a hit. Yeah. Now this is something you can't do, you know, ten times in every game. Because that linebacker, even as he drops, and if he drops and that tight end runs up in his face, and he's starting to look, and if you, especially if you've got that fullback crossing pattern a couple of times, boy, then he starts playing it. Then he starts playing it. Okay? <laughs> but again, it's just a is he open? Yeah, throw him the ball. If he's not open, find a tight end. Throw him the ball. Now, what we've done here, and I'm not sure that I would recommend attempting to do this unless you have a guy that's that's quite advanced, because these are not easy patterns. I mean, those are not easy patterns, especially after you look at two other people. Those are not easy. They're not easy. But what we, we will do with this, and we're very so we never throw the five on the outside, the comeback on the outside. We have gotten back to the backside four, but we've told the quarterback. Well, that guy's not there, find a tight end. You know, he's not there. Or if you stay with the crossing pattern too long, you know, you thought it was there, you thought it was going to be there, and all of a sudden you find yourself over here, and you don't want to come back over to find the tight end, then that inside breaking route is right in your vision, and it come. Especially if it was taken at that backside backer we're talking about really jumps it, and they're playing the zone. There is a hole with the ball in there. And like I said, we've thrown the ball there one time. Normally the ball's gonna go here, most of the time it's gonna go there, but it will get thrown there also. Okay? Pretty easy though. It, high percentage, crossing pattern, little cross and dump pattern in front of you from here to the, the thing right here. I like to throw that. And I don't throw very good though. He's still throw though, Steve, huh? Yeah, one of my old DBs from San Diego State here. Right? <laughs> Steve was a great athlete though. He was he could he could do some things. He could almost run as fast as I could. Let's see. <laughs> okay, F flat, F cross. Now F post, and this is the best play we have. Everybody has a best play when it gets down to the nut cutting time. You know, you have to throw the ball. You're going to throw the ball. Everybody has a play that you're going to throw. I mean, it's your play. The whole team knows it. The quarterback can tell you. The receivers can tell you. The offensive line can tell you. Everybody can tell you what the call is going to go ahead and be. <clears throat> and it's good. I mean, you got to have one of those where you have that kind of confidence in it. This is ours. This is ours now. Okay? Again, now, what we're going to do is throw the ball to the fullback first uh, if he's there. Now, we need a little wider angle from the fullback than those other two angles. Those other two angles now in the flat and the cross were <coughs> outside him for the tight end, weren't they? Now, we're going to give him an aiming point of a couple of <coughs> yards behind the tight end. If that's two yards behind the tight end, that's the angle you want to go ahead and run at. And we tell them if it is zone coverage, if it comes up zone, then we want to run right up that crease. We want to run right up that crease. And the thing that's great now is if you get a team that will play a strong side zone and if they're in a 30 front and get a four-man rush by bringing the outside linebacker, <coughs> and, and especially if it's inverted, you know, if they're doing that, or even if they're backing him there, they bring this guy, he goes there, he can be influenced a little bit by that tight end. Again, now you've got that same kind of a release now that the tight end's doing on these others. It is the same release now. You're talking about that backer looking for a crossing pattern. <coughs> okay? We would like to take this route and run it right up that seam and let the quarterback put it on him. We've done it in three steps even, where it's really broke open quickly. The quarterback has come back in three steps and hit that guy running straight up the field. It's important now, if it does come up zone, 
that he get out in this crease and then look for the ball quickly and run straight up the field once he turns up the field. Run straight up the field. Don't drift out on him. And we don't want a big inside angle if you're it's zone and you're running up that crease. The other thing that can happen now is if it comes up man coverage, and sometimes zones will look like man to him, but if it comes up man coverage, the first thing we told him to do is cross the face of the guy that's covering you. Cross his face. So let's say now that this linebacker is covering man for man. First of all, what he's probably done is probably pushed this tight end a little bit down in there. Then he's come out, then he's come out to cover the fullback. And if we said, make sure you cross his face, sometimes, again, if you get across his face, that's great. And that angle may change, even though we said post. That angle may change to that. It almost looks like a cross end of it. Then there looks like a cross pattern, except it happens a little bit wider. That's the reason we tell this guy, what do we tell him on 545? Whatever you do, you do it on the other side of the ball. From the ball on out, from the ball on out now, <laughs> you've got to give this post room to work. So you, whatever you're going to do, you do on this side of the football. Whether you're going to gear down against zone or whether you're going to continue to run versus man coverage. You go ahead and do it on the other side of the ball. Now, the other thing that can happen here now is if this guy comes out a little late and he's there and you're already there, now to tell that guy to get across his face, he's almost going to have to come to a complete stop, isn't he? I mean, if I'm coming out of there hard and that backer has ridden that guy a little bit and all of a sudden, He's there, it's going to be hard for me to get across his face. I mean, hell, i got to stop and try to duck all the way back underneath it. So what we told him was this. So what we tell him is, you continue to move fast. You continue to move fast. You make the decision of whether you're going to do that or whether you're going to go ahead and run over the top of him, run over the top of him up the field, but if you go around him or over the top of him, then once you get over the top, you've got to break inside. Okay. Once you have gone around him, say I'm the fullback coming out, gets covering me here, I'm coming out just like this, he gets stuck in there a little bit, I can't get across his face, but if I just keep running, he runs up the field with me. As soon as I get over the top, then I want to give the quarterback an angle to throw at. If you do it fast, if you do it fast, and you come open, the quarterback will find you. If you're not open, he's going to move on to the next guy. All right, he's moving on to the next guy. We said, right now, you're coming back. It's three big ones, four or five feet up underneath me. I don't like it. Who do I find? Tight end. He's not there. Then the comeback on the outside. Again, that's a little tougher. Now, if you want to just forget the comeback on the outside and tell him to go right to the swing, no problem with that. There's no problem with that. We've gotten the ball out here quite a bit. We've gotten it out here <laughs> quite a bit. These guys have to do these things fast. Fast. It's not a... Oh, I, I'm going to check and see, you know, what that. I'm going to check and see what that coverage is. It's man coverage, and on the crossing route, I have to get across his face. So I'm going to slow down a little bit so that I can keep my body position here, so I can get there. As soon as you slow down, what does he do? He stops. He's standing there, and the coach has told him what? Man coverage. Don't let that sucker inside of you. Don't you let him inside of you. Now, if you're running the flat pattern, you would run, continue to run fast to break to the flat, wouldn't you? Well, then continue to run fast. Continue to run fast and get him to move, then get across his face. We tell him, get in there any way you can get in there. If you've got a spin off, run into him, spin off to get in there, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. We even had a guy do it on an F post one time. I don't recommend it with that, but we've had him go ahead and do it with that. Okay? All right, let's move on to the next one over here, then. Okay, we see the progression here. One, two, three, four. Again, if you want to forget this, you don't feel comfortable with the quarterback being able to go ahead and throw that one on the outside, then he can just work to the swing. You know he can, you know he can throw a swing. You know damn well he can do that, right? And this over here, again, we'll work the strong side. What we'll tell the quarterback to do now is if the corner is off on the outside and that two pattern really turns into a hitch with the corner off, if he's open, throw it to him. In fact, we've changed this thing. Uh, uh, since we first put it in, we got hitches on both sides, so he can take either side now. If it is. Take the hitch on either side. Okay? If the corner's off, if you throw the hitch, go ahead and throw it. If you can't throw the hitch with the corner off, the corner's off, you know, well, you don't like the looks of it, or you don't like the looks of that guy doing that, then we tell him just come right in and go ahead and find that guy and throw him the ball. Usually with the corner off, that pattern, the, the, the corner pattern, you know, not much chance, huh? Corners off, 
that corner pattern, the fullback run to the corner doesn't have much chance. And again, like I said before, I mean, we'll run it with the guy out here where he can get there quickly. Where he can go ahead and get there quickly. Okay? Look at it just like that. Now, let's say it comes up and it's a double press type look. There's a, maybe a safety over the top. Maybe there's not a safety over the top. Now we think we have a chance to get the ball to the F corner. We've got a chance now with that initial alignment of getting the ball over the top. All right. Now the one thing we got to be able to see is whether this corner on the outside is going to chase that wide receiver down inside. Remember we said against a press look here, we're going to waste a little time to give that thing a chance to clear. Then we're going to do what? We're going to run in there. And we're going to run in there. It's not one of those, you know, you know, waiting to get back out again. I mean, he's going to do that. And then his shoulders are over. He's running. Get this guy to run with you. I'm running across the field. You don't run across the field. You don't run a crossing pattern with your shoulders back in here, right? Your shoulders are over and your arms are pumping and you're running hard. And you've got to make the guy do it that way. And the quarterback now can see. He knows with a press look that uh, there is no hitch on the outside now, right? Press work for a roll look. There is no hitch out there. So then <laughs> he immediately thinks, I can throw the ball to there. And if I can't throw it there, then I'm going to go ahead and throw it there. But the first thing he has to see is whether that corner is going to chase it. I mean, that's important. So if the corner chases him in there, this area in here opens up pretty nice, doesn't it? That area will open up pretty darn nice back in there. Now, if I still can't throw it there, then I've got to come back and work that. And that's basically what we have. We have ended up throwing the ball back out there. But basically, we want to work that right back into that area there, OK? Again, again the, the whole thing now is high percentage for the quarterback, right? There's not a lot of long throws in it. There's not a lot of long throws in it. This, this should be a 65% and up I mean, on these patterns here. Throwing it to the fullback or the tight end. Fullback, tight end, fullback, tight end. Now, some of the others will knock the percentage down. When you start throwing the ball way up the field, of course, your percentage is going down. But fullback and tight end should be very, very high percentage for you uh, on these particular pass patterns here. OK, let's get a quick look at just a couple of these things on the field. Uh, so you can see what we're talking about. If I can run this down, then, you know. Uh, you'll see a lot of different forms. OK, to start with, we're going to try to get it. Oh, Oh, I have to stop it first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Excuse me, reverse it. I'm going, I'm going to the branch. You got to reverse there? Well, why don't you go ahead and run it? You know how to run it. Okay, okay. So we'll start it right here. Okay, good. I remember this one now. This is 839. This is 839 with the F flat, right? We're going to run an F flat. Now, here the, the quarterback liked the 8 pattern, so he went ahead and threw it. <clears throat> just go ahead and move on now. There's just a different way to throw the same thing now. You'll still see the tight end on the inside three. You'll see the flat pattern by the fullback. It was really a tight end on that one there. But we had a shot at the backside play. Again, you got a chance for a big play on the backside. Now, here's the crossing pattern now. This should be cross. No, this is flat again. This is flat again. Again, the quarterback's going to the eight pattern up there. Okay, let's see this one here now. The strong side's up on top. Tight end inside release. See the guard dual read the thing now? See the right guard? There's a 34 defense. It goes inside backer to outside backer. There's a flat pattern. Now he sort of stayed with his eight a little bit. See this backside post pattern? The weak safety worked over here before he came out of it late. And then he just found the tight end. He just came back and found the tight end and threw it in the ball. We're just going to move the tight end across the formation. It'll happen up on top. There's a flat. Oh, hell, we're going eight again. <laughs> okay. He liked the eight on the outside again. <clears throat> okay, now we're moving. 
it's just a little different formation. There's the flat again, there's the tight end. You run that back, Coach? Yeah, yeah, that, that was, he ended up coming back down to the swing. I don't know how the hell he got there other than <laughs> throw the eighth and then they busted coverage. Reggie White that was supposed to come off and cover the guy and he didn't. That was the very first play of that playoff game in 89. Crossing pattern now. Fullback, yes, give it to him. Now here he had to come. This is man coverage. He had to get it. He had to wait on him just a little bit to let him get across his face. But that's who we're going to throw the ball to. We're going to throw it. Now the guy moving here is the actual fullback, right? He is the up cross. No. Yeah, you see the tight end there. I thought it was going to be a hot in it. It's a different way of doing it. There's a, that's pretty easy now. I, I think that's easy. Now, I don't think that is hard for a quarterback to do. You throw it to the fullback if you say, is he there? Yeah, give it to him. Now, it's important if the fullback gets the ball that he turns up the field with the ball. If you skitter and clear across the field and take a, you know, lose more yards than what you originally gained. Get the ball. Get it put away, get up the field with it. And I didn't like the fullback came to the tight end on that one. Yeah, that's what you don't want to do. We're out here. Get the ball and turn it up the field. All positive yards. Again, it's the same play, it's just a different way of doing it, that's all. Just a little different look is all. And for the quarterback, the read is all the same. The read does not change at all for him. Now here's a smart inside backer that gets tied up with a tight end. See him? You show that one back again? It's pretty easy now, especially down in here. This is tough territory, isn't it? First and 10 on the 13, first and 10 on the 10, 11 yard line. Is he open? Yeah, give him the ball. Now that's Matt Millen, that inside linebacker there. Now we'll come back and throw this again now, and he starts to see it. Is he there? Yes, give it to him. So we got a loose rusher on the outside, we still get the ball off, right? Short, quick pass. Short, quick pass. Here it is again. Now he starts to come off and he slips. And he was looking for it. Get up the field with the ball. Now this is the only time we've ever come out and thrown the four pattern, but watch the quarterback. He starts to throw the cross, didn't like it. And then that four pattern, that crossing route happened to be right in his vision. I'm not advocating. This is the only time we're ever throwing this thing. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to hell of a big play, boy. The next game of the season, we end up winning to get us in the playoffs. We're, we're, we're behind here with about three and a half minutes left. This is that post. That was the 545. We moved on to 545 here, it looks like. Fullback angle is wider. See it? A little bit wider. Now here we'll do it with movement. We have a tight end. He is a fullback. Get across his face. Man coverage. Watch it again. Most of the time you'll see it with this kind of movement. Most of the time. He didn't like the fullback. Now it's a tight end, isn't it? Yeah, just a little different look. There's a fullback running the... Uh, Show it back again, would you? Yes. Just a little different look now. This guy in actuality is a fullback. He's running the F post. This guy's running the F post. He runs the inside four over here. And this is the five on the back side. You work it all the way back there. Again, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. You gotta have a guy that, that's got a pretty good arm now to go ahead and do that as a third option. <clears throat> Should we throw the swing? 
Or good anticipation. That guy kept moving, didn't he? Ran right around there. Can you show that one back again? That's just the Good anticipation now by the quarterback. And the receiver kept running, didn't they? Watch him. Just keep running. Keep running. If you come open, the quarterback will find you. Now, this is man coverage. If you can get across his face, you've got a chance for something big to happen. Very short throw that can turn into big plays. Jeff Post is going to be the guy that's lined up out there. Again, just keep moving. Again, I don't think these throws are real hard throws on, on this F post. The I don't think they're that hard. Come back out, control. Now there, it looked like he could have still got the guy, but he didn't like it. He went right to the tight end. Tight end's easy to find. The receiver didn't look. The quarterback was ready to throw him the ball. The receiver didn't look. It was, it was almost an uncovered look there, wasn't it? Okay, there's the F-post, the guy lined up in the slot there in the middle. He's the F-post guy. Open, yeah, throw it to him. This is just a little different. We just switched the release on it. See, this receiver looked. He saw the uncovered. Come right out, throwing the ball. Just stay out of that crease. Tight end. All right, that tight end pass is easy, isn't it? And if you want to work out to that swing on top, that swing is not a hard ball, uh, pass to throw. Now here you want to round the guy again, but if you go over the top or around him, then make sure you bend inside for the quarterback. Make sure you bend back inside. He saw this man, the guy came up and pressed him. You want to round him? That's fine. Now break back inside. Give the quarterback something to throw at. Now we're just lined up. You have to post to be the guy in the slot. And if you got some guy that can run with it after he gets it. Now this will be a switched release, but basically it's the same thing. There's a hot, huh? Show that one back. Here again, it was just a, you know, just a triple type look. And the tight ends just switched to release. See, the tight end off the ball is the guy's going to run the four, and he's a hot guy. There's going to be a loose rusher out here, but it's too late. He doesn't even get close to the quarterback, does he? Let's see if we can find a uh, color bar in here and uh, get to the uh, 432. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the F corner will be the guy in the slot there. He's going to run the corner pattern. Here's a hitch on the outside with the corner off. See it? And then that same in, that inside three. We show that back at this. <clears throat> this inside three now that the tight end is running, we want it to look like the four he just ran on the 545 F post, where he's going to be running across the field. Now, start like you're running across the field, <laughs> and then turn into the quarterback, and then Move back outside again. Move back outside again. Again, very high percentage, isn't it? That pass is very high percentage. Now we'll get the hitch on the outside by the move guy. That, you know, just, we don't get very often. 
So there's a little hitch, like almost like a fake delay out there. Here he's throwing it on five step. We use this in two minute too. Some of these will be two minute. Uh, now we'll move the fullback outside of this guy, so he's going to run the hitch. Not bad if you got a back that's really good one on one out there. You can get a matchup. What's your quarterback step? Are you just kind of backing up as soon as you see someone open throwing? Well, if the guy on the outside is open with the corner off, we'd like to throw it to him, right? If he's not open on the outside, then we'd like to work back inside to the tight end. Now that corner pattern he threw, we don't get very often unless it's you know completely man coverage. Here's a hot situation again here, huh? Now we back out to the left. We're backing out to the left on the scats to the left. Scats to the left so you can see the hot a little easier. There was a hot. Was the tight end open? Yeah, give it to him. <laughs> that was one of the double press look, but I really thought he'd, he'd get to the corner pattern on that. And here's a hitch with the corner off on the outside. Throw it to him. It's a nice, easy gain. But if you can't get the hitch on the outside, you've got something else for the quarterback to go to <clears throat> if you can't get it. Again, there's a hitch on the outside. That's good. Let's just play that one. I didn't think that's fine. <clears throat> Again, I think you can run this thing at, at any level. As you look at it, see the throws a quarterback has to make. In those situations, we'll run them in all those situations. We'll run them coming out of our own end zone, and we'll run a couple of them, even going in red area plays. We'll keep them usually all up in the red area until we get to a third and goal type situation. You know, seven, eight yard line, uh, you know, some of these are not very good in that situation. We need something else. But the thing that we like about him is you can run a first, second, third down. You saw a lot of third down situations come up, you know. And and then uh, again, uh, we like him every place on the field except for right down close to the goal line. You know? Again, it's the quarterback, just repetition. Right? The, the big thing, repetition, high percentage. Anything else? No, good seeing you guys. And, uh, have a good rest of the day. I'm going to San Diego. <laughs> three years, and uh, it's, uh, I'm real happy to be down here representing Cerritos. Uh, also, when you're coaching in the secondary, uh, the opportunity to work with uh, the defensive coordinator is, is a key part of being able, again, to have some input and uh, being able to let you go a little bit and coach some things, and uh, Mike McPherson's our defensive coordinator, and that's uh, a great situation. And, one of the reasons that uh, I enjoy coaching is the situation I have up there. I've gone to a lot of clinics over the years, and uh, I've got about three goals that I'd like to accomplish today. One is, some of them aren't, aren't quite as important in a smaller room like this, but I've been to these clinics. One, I try to figure out the VCR so when we show the tape, you can don't have to fumble around. i got that solved because Jim's got somebody here to take care of it. The second is try not to stand in front of this thing when I'm drawing. They've got to read it off my shoulder. And the third one is to put some uh, overlays on there that you guys can see in the back of the room. I know guys put these things up and they always say, can you see that? And if you're not in the third row, you got to have a microscope to see them. So those would be the three things I try to get accomplished today. Can you guys see that? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that some other ones here. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is something that um, I really believe in and something that uh, <laughs> we've been doing up at Cerritos College, we've been doing it up before I got up there, is trying to play the same coverages out of a pre-snap look. It fits in a little bit with some of the stuff that Ernie was talking about. We're trying to make it more difficult for the quarterback to make those kinds of decisions that he was speaking about. And I think one of the ways to do that is putting the burden of recognition back on the offense uh, as they come away from the football. We play all of our pre-snap 
looks right up until the ball is actually snapped. We're not stemming. We have what we call a stem. We define a stem as a movement uh, before the snap of the ball. But these aren't stems. We play them right from that. There's two ways we think to do it. One is uh, give them the same pre-snap alignment every time. Uh, and the other one is to vary the pre-snap alignment on a continual basis. Uh, we'll go kind of with the first one. And we have some different packages. And we'll give you some different looks out of different package. But out of the base package that we're going to talk about today, Okay, we're going to give you the same pre-snap look every time, and uh, some of the reasons for that, okay, the, in our base package, what I'm going to talk about is basically a first down package, a second and six or less uh, run pass situations, and we do play it some in third down, okay, or in long yardage. Okay? We go into a dime package, but we will not play it exclusively uh, on the first downs. We will, we will show it to you sometimes on third down also, but more, more or less, it's a base package. We've chosen the quarter-quarter halves pre-snap alignment. I'm sure you've heard guys like Bobby Cope and Tom Hayes and the UCLA guys talk about that <laughs> coverage. Uh, we're using that for two reasons. One is we play a high percentage of shoved front, and that coverage fits in real well. Okay. And secondly, we think that that alignment effectively disguises a variety of coverages. Okay. And I'm, as I go through this, I'll show you some of the things that we really like uh, about it. Okay, we play the same alignment with either the shove front or the 50 front. And we play both of those fronts uh, probably just about 50-50. Okay, this one's drawn up with the shove front, but this is our base look up here. Okay, we're going to play this uh, pressed corner right up here. We're going to get him up as tight as we possibly can in a good squared up stance. Okay, he's going to play with his inside foot inside the outside foot of the wide receiver. So we're going to be in an outside shade.